For those of you who don't know me, I'm Susan Lozier. I'm the Dean of the College of Sciences. And I could talk a lot about the sustainability work we have going on in the college, but given we have five minutes, I have five minutes um, before I head off to um, another meeting, Beryl suggested that I just tell you about my own research, which touches on sustainability. So I am what's called a physical oceanographer. I study um, ocean circulation and ocean dynamics. And in particular, I study the ocean's role in climate. Um, some of you, did any of you learn about what's called um, the ocean conveyor belt when you were in middle school or high school? I see a yes. Anybody else out there have seen that or heard about it? Okay. Um, the ocean has a large scale overturning where water is at very high latitude. Um, when they become cold during the winter, they sink and they're denser than waters anywhere else and those, so they spread to distant parts of the, of the globe. Those waters then have to upwell. We can't just keep sending waters to depth. When they upwell, they return to where they started. And when they return to where they started, that means they go through the tropics and then they end up at high latitudes, meaning, meaning they're bringing warmth to those high, um, high areas. So when I talk to people, I say one way that people can understand how the conveyor belt is, works and they understand that um, its impact is if you think about the North Atlantic, and you go up to, let's say, 45 degrees north or 50 degrees north, and you think about the climate difference between what it is in Labrador, you know, the Canadian provinces, and what it is over in northern Europe and the UK, there's about a 20 degrees Celsius difference in the average temperature year round. And the reason for that is when this overturning circulation, the surface waters are going back up to the polar latitudes in the North Atlantic, they're bringing warm waters, up, and meanwhile we have the westerlies that are blowing over the Atlantic and then bringing that warm water um, to the um, northern Europe, warm air uh, to northern Europe and, um, and the UK. So the moisture and heat has been picked up from the ocean. So why does this matter? Why does this matter? Um, this overturning circulation makes our planet very habitable, but why are we concerned about it now? The reason we're concerned about it now is that it may change. It may change because as surface waters warm, there's more ice melt. And when there's more ice melt and the warming, surface waters become less dense at high latitudes. And when they become less dense, they don't sink. So we've known for a long time that any disruptions to the ocean overturning circulation will impact our climate because it impacts the amount of heat that's delivered northward to deliver poleward. Um, and in distant past, in ice ages, changes in the overturning circulation have had a profound, profound difference on our climate. In many ways, that's why we've moved in and out um, of ice ages. But there's even something of even more consequence is that in the 1990s, um, there was a question, this is um, just when I was uh, starting my career, uh, there's a question out there about where has all the carbon gone? Because when, um, we were, we, the atmospheric chemists, were trying to understand uh, if they could account for all the carbon dioxide that's been put into the atmosphere since the burning of fossil fuel. They found that they couldn't find it all in the atmosphere, right, when they did the inventory. Um, but what we know now, after looking in the ocean for the carbon, uh, we now have an estimate that about 30% of the carbon dioxide that has been released since the start of the Industrial Revolution is now stored in the deep ocean. What? How did it get to the deep ocean? It got to the deep ocean because when those waters at high latitudes are formed, remember I said that in the winter they lose heat and then they sink? Well, they carry with them the anthropogenic carbon dioxide they've gained at the surface. So those waters that are going down now and traveling as part of this global ocean um, overturning circulation are carrying the signature of you know, the burning of fossil fuels since the, anthrop since the start of the, uh, the Industrial Revolution. It's been a very sobering fact to me to think that you can go down at 4,000 meters of depth in the North Atlantic and you can see, you know, our impact. Now, you might say, well, this isn't this good news because that, that carbon dioxide is not in the atmosphere. Okay, but it's also bad news because that uh, anthropogenic carbon dioxide leads to ocean acidification. So this is a huge concern right, for, for ocean ecosystems. So the big question for um, people like me who study ocean circulation and ocean dynamics is, what is the overturning circulation going to do in the years and decades ahead? So I'm the international lead for 
an observing system called OSNAP, overturning in the subpolar North Atlantic program. We have an array of instruments from the Labrador coast to one side of Greenland, the other side of Greenland, all the way over to Scotland, where we are measuring, monitoring, and attempting to understand what factors um, will influence the overturning circulation. All climate models, all climate models show that the overturning is projected to decline um, this century. Some climate models say we should have already seen this decline. The observations are insufficient for us to say whether it is or isn't declining. The ocean is just very noisy. Um, lots of stuff going on there. Um, but with the observations and with the, um, with the climate model, we are getting to where we're going to be able to have you know, better projections. So there's a lot going on in the ocean. The ocean is warming, sea levels are rising. Unfortunately, we have um, ocean acidification. There is a risk um, of the overturning slowdown. Some of you may read about it. it. Always makes headlines when a new study comes out and says that it's going to collapse. Um, those are a little. Um, I'm, I'm going to say all of us. I'm going to say in general believe that the overturning is going to slow down in this century. Uh, the collapse is an unlikely scenario, um, um, according you know to the IPCC. But we're on it, we're on it, meaning <laughs> there is a huge global effort um, to measure, monitor, you know, the, um, the ocean circulation. But what's really needed, of course, is to reduce the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere gets, gets into the deep ocean. Um, but, you know, efforts are underway to talk about um, more conservation efforts, ways to create more marine protected areas. So there's also um, efforts that are going on in that direction too. And look, I talked long enough for the next speaker to show up. Beryl, how am I doing? Beryl, did I fill in time? Okay. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in knowing more, we're going to have, um, the College of Sciences is hosting a Frontiers in Science Climate Action Day on um, April 18th. And we're going to highlight what we're doing across the board uh, in the college about uh, climate challenges and climate solutions. So please look for information on that. So thank you for the microphone. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.